CCC in a case of intumescent cataract step by step guide There are various morphological types of cataract but one type of cataract which creates fear in a beginner surgeon's mind is a intumescent cataract because it makes the CCC a difficult one The difference between a normal lens and an intumescent cataractous lens is the raised intralenticular pressure which makes the CCC difficult. In this case, the cataract looks mature on gross examination but on slit examination the anterior cortex and nucleus appears clear while there is a fluid collection between cortex and the posterior capsule. This is the first stage of intumescent cataract where the fluid starts forming between cortex and the capsule. With time the entire lens becomes foggy and it becomes full blown intumescent cataract. With increase in intralenticular pressure there is also shallowing of anterior chamber and later it may give rise to phacomorphic type of glaucoma. So we have to tackle shallow anterior chamber and increase intralenticular pressure. So how to tame this intumescent cataract? Let's go step by step. Step 1. First we have to create two small side port incisions for closed chamber maneuvers and then do proper staining of anterior capsule. Creating these small two side ports helps us in having controlled maneuvers in the anterior chamber. because viscoelastic will not come out through the small incision also a good staining of capsule under air using trepan glue is important because this staining makes the capsule little bit thicker and also it is easy to maneuver a stained capsule so this is how we stain the anterior capsule using trepan glue for 20 to 30 seconds If we don't do closed chamber maneuvers as in this case I am trying to achieve CCC with open incision there is a higher risk of radial extension of the tear because there is no counter pressure over the intralenticular pressure Step 2 visco attack To counteract the intralenticular pressure we have to create proper anterior chamber pressure by using proper viscoelastic agents the technique of my choice is using soft shell technique in soft shell techniques we use a high density dispersive agent such as visco and below this over the anterior capsule we inject a high molecular weight cohesive viscoelastic such as hyaluronic acid till the anterior chamber is filled by this techniques the anterior chamber becomes deep and there is a counter pressure which is created over the anterior capsule to counteract the raised intralenticular pressure to demonstrate this technique i am injecting visco till the air bubble is out after visco is injected i am injecting hyaluronic acid over the anterior lens capsule till it flattens step 3 cruciate puncture now once you make a opening in anterior capsule because there is a pressure gradient between the intralenticular elements and the outside of the chamber there is a tendency of the fluid inside the lens to flow out through this opening into the incision Now during this movement there is a high chances that there might be radial extension of the opening. So when you make a single opening there is more forces which are acting on the edges which makes the radial extension easier. But if you make a cruciate kind of incision where there are multiple tears in the center the force gets divided and there is a less likelihood of extension of any of the tears. to demonstrate here i have made a cruciate incision in on the center of the anterior capsule because of the cruciate incision and also presence of high molecular weight viscoelastic in the soft shell technique the fluid comes out through this opening very very slowly in a controlled manner 
and also there is no radial extension of the tail. Step 5. Deflate and tap. Now initially we have to use 27 gauge cannula to aspirate out the anterior cortex and then we have to tap the nucleus down so that the fluid trap between the nucleus cortex and the posterior capsule comes out into the anterior part. These maneuvers will help us taking the intralenticular pressure down. So this is how we do it. We use 27 gauge cannula again from the small side port to take out the mid peripheral cortex. While doing that we also tap the nucleus down. Once a bit of cortex is out we again inflate the anterior chamber and again we go from the other side port to take out the cortex from the other part of the lens. If we don't do that then there may be still some intumescent left at the other part of the lens from where there might be some radial extension. Step 5. Strokes from the periphery. Despite taking out the cortex from anterior and posterior part of the lens, there are still some fluid pockets left in the periphery and these pockets can cause radial extension. To remove these pockets, we have to gently nudge the peripheral capsule using visco cannula, flattening it out. Also inject little bit of visco on these humps so that at the end of this step, the anterior capsule should become flat all throughout. So this is the tamed lens with no intumescence left. Now we can use cystitome or microcapsulorexis forceps through side ports for closed chamber maneuvers. Doing CCC in this stage is very very easy because there is no intumescence left. In some cases we tend to make smaller CCC. In such cases we can simply give a tangential nick with vanas and then enlarge the rexis with microcapsulorexis forceps. We can do that even after IOL implantation. In that case the IOL optic will work like a template. You can use simple microcapsulorexis forceps to enlarge the rexis to desired size and shape. So even if you make a smaller rexis to start with, we can always modify the rexis later. So if one follows all these steps properly and methodically, we can achieve good rexis in all cases of intumescent cataracts. So there is no need to avoid premium IOLs in su such cases. Thank you so much for your patient listening.